In this video, we'll see about how the bot is going to listen our messages and how it, it is going to reply back to our messages. Yep. So earlier in the earlier video, we have thought that for each and every change in the index.js file, we need to stop the service and again we need to type node space node space index.js and again we need to run this service again so this is an overhead for each and every change here we need to stop the service again we need to uh, start the service so this is an overhead we can have an alternate to uh, for this so for that i am uh, installing npm install node mon so this is a library node mon uh, i think you could be able to see this yeah node mon npm install node mon so with this library, I'm installing this, this library. So this uh, library, what this package uh, does, NodeMon, it will watch the files. If any of the changes occur, it would automatically pick those changes instead of uh, uh, stopping and starting the server. So now we could be able to install the NodeMon. The next thing we need to do is, so if you want to clear the console, you have an option of uh, doing a clear, type clear, so console would be cleared shell shell console would be cleared or else you can uh, have a option of uh, into mark here which will also clear the shell so now once we have installed the node mode, again i'm going back to the package json file so in this package json file if you observe here the node mode would be installed here the node mode was installed so we'll be writing a script here so such that when we run uh, npm dev so this node mode script would be running so now NodeMon needs to watch index.js file. So we will be writing entire uh, uh, project in this index.js file. So, so that the NodeMon would be uh, watching this file. Whenever any changes happen to this file, it will reload uh, automatically. So the script is uh, dev. So you can write anything here. Dev. So how to run this? So I, I, I need to run this as npm run dev. So the name which you give to the script. So once you run this, the underlining command. So let me run this. So once you run this, uh, if you can observe the underlining command is node mon index.js. So the same this command would be running. You can uh, see watch this node mon is doing. It is watching the files. And once any changes to this file occurred, it would be restarted. So now the overhead would be gone. So you no need to, uh, for each and every changes, you no need to restart the node service again. So it would automatically uh, do this. Node mon would automatically help us to do this. So fine. Now let's start with the listening to the messages. We have events. So events are the things in, uh, not only in the JavaScript events or events are like, uh, if anything happened, if anyone messaged something, if the bot logs in. So these are, uh, these are some events. We need to listen these events before replying back. So let me explain one of the event like this. So client dot once ready. So if the client is ready, it means the bot, if once a bot is ready, so this function would be triggered. This is an event like client dot once ready. It means it only triggers once when the bot is logged in. So if you want to do any of the activities when the bot is logged in, so like welcome, welcome messages like that, you can keep that in this function. So this is a callback function. When the bot comes to the first online, this, this event would be triggered. So here, just for now, I'm just logging this. So this triggers only once. Ready. So once the bot logs in, you will be getting this ready. So now we could able to log in the bot and this event was triggered here. So uh, I, I will comment this event. I will uh, discuss about how to listen the messages event now. So this is one event. So it only triggers once as we discussed. Now we are going to write one more event, client on. So this is a message event. So this would be triggered multiple times on message. So whenever the user's uh, message send any message, this event would be triggered. Unlike once, this is triggered multiple times. And this message has a message object. So when someone messages, this message object would be having here. So this is uh, this callback we wrote in an arrow function. So in, in, in the same way here also we are writing in an arrow function. So arrow function is a ES6 uh, new feature. 
so it would be like uh, instead of functions you can write the arrow function so where it would be simpler in in terms of syntax and the usage as well so now in this message object if someone uh, user messages something this message object would consist of that message so let me print that message so i am printing that message message dot content so message is an object so whenever an event occurs whenever someone sends this message object consists of what who is sending that message and the capability of replying back to that message so now i wrote the message dot content just i'm printing that message what the user has clicked i'm just printing that message so let's see that go back go back to your application discord.com channels here now as uh, the bot was logged in because we we have we are running this application the bot logged in so now i will be uh, just i will uh, ping see is a test message so now i have typed this so as soon as i type this message bot is capable of reading this message if you go back here you can you could able to see here bot could able to listen to these messages as we are just consoling that it is only just consoling it it doesn't I mean it is not doing more than that just consoling it means we could able to listen the messages so this is how you need to listen to the messages just coming to replying back how the bot needs to reply back so i will show you we need to uh, write an if condition because there would be n number of uh, conditions or uh, text it can be sending message dot content for what message what reply should be bot should reply back so if you do, if you ask something bot should reply to the uh, relevant message so in that case we need to check what is the content it, we are sending and what it is the message it is replying back so for that just i am doing this if someone some user sends ping we need to reply back saying that pong so this is a simple replying back it's a sample one i am showing we need to reply back with this message object itself this message object will consist of what the message was sent and what we need to reply back so message dot channel dot send this is how so message object dot channel means we are going to send the message in this channel dot send means we are sending this so it is an string it accepts a string so i am typing this as a pong so this is how the bot needs to be replied the condition we wrote as ping is so if someone only types ping it will return pong if he doesn't uh, type uh, ping it will not reply anything so this is the condition we wrote here so let's check that so now i will uh, click ping so as soon as i click ping the bot replied me back saying pong so this is how bot has listened to our messages and it has replied back correctly if i no if i give some other text like ping so it will not reply back because we wrote a condition saying that if someone sends exactly this message then only reply back or react to th those messages otherwise don't you know, reply back them so that is what we wrote here condition so that's the reason if you click ping the bot has replied to pong so in the next lesson we'll learn more uh, uh, regarding the server messages and user real time data we can will be seeing